shut up, you listen to my monkey mouth. As a companion, when you got pun on the canoe route, hopped in a portal and got in a fight. Elias knocked him out. Bow, Naruto fighting style. Bow, you will see he tapped out. Bow, we win, we get crowned. Monkey mouth, monkey mouth, monkey mouth, monkey mouth. Them Portal Boys be podcasting. This is Joshua. And this is Elias. And we got some big changes on the way. Ooh, boy. So, first off, our man Justin Roiland. King of the, uh, king of the fuck boys. I mean, like, listen, guys. If we really thought that the guy who was behind Rick and Morty was a normal cat. Yeah. You were tripping. But I definitely wasn't expecting... Um, that level of depravity, depravity. Yeah, there's depravity. some there's some weirdness going on. I don't even really want to speak too much on what he had. If you going watch on. the show and you watch Rick and Morty, you know what what Justin was up to. Like, there's no denying there's at that. least you're at least peripherally yeah. aware, and um, I don't want to give that type of behavior any type of shine whatsoever. And yeah, so neither of us do, we so. don't need to like really go into. I mean, clearly, every, you know, there, there's some stuff that they're going to have to go to court and it's going to have to be determined who said what, when and how it really went down. But like, buddy, it looks bad in the few places and there's some DMS and there's some audio recordings and there's some, some stuff out there, man, that like all, all adds up to, to, we need to, uh, pivot yeah. and we're not going to be doing, uh, Rick and Morty anymore. We may come back and do an episode here and there, but the point is that it's portal boys and we're portaling into and out of, different cartoon universes whether it be a cartoon or an anime and so the universe that we're portaling into today is demon slayer yeah and we're going to cover the first five episodes of demon slayer um so if you're concerned with it being spoiled uh definitely tune out right but the idea is that if you're on the fence about whether or not you want to watch this uh we're going to tell you about what our experience was with it um i've seen every episode that's been released of demon slayer i'm a big dork i mean i'm literally wearing a demon slayer shirt um whereas mikey doesn't even really watch anime much at no, all like and not so much. my yeah. my my for my like my foray into anime was basically like diving into a very deep pool knowing nothing about it because i went to louisiana May. so that was just like going from like zero to a hundred yeah yeah i didn't know anything about it and then i'm hanging out with nothing but weebs and the weebiest yeah the weebiest people who went and spent money on cosplays and (laughs) literally psa's in the morning of like take showers and deodorant as your friend weebies you know oh my god it was are you kidding no no lie man oh my god they were giving psa's for people to fucking take care of their hygiene yeah yeah yeah. it was like psa hygiene. listen I, i so i've never been to a con Right. Yeah. I, I've been to conventions. I've actually given keynote speeches in front of thousands of people before. Yeah. But I've never Literally been. Literally one of the people feared death. I mean, fear that more than death. So, Oh, yeah, it's no problem. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it's, it's at some point I got thrown into the fire. I'm run, I was running businesses. Yeah. And it was what I needed to do for in order for me to do the right thing for my business. And, you know, merit held that I had to do what was right for my business. So I went and done it. Yeah. Um, did well at it. Um, but. What the fuck are we talking PSA about? PSA about Why hygiene. the fuck are we talking about? Oh, bro. That's nuts. So, yeah, like I said, I've, I've been to conventions, but I've never been to, yeah. like, an anime or, mm-hmm. or comic-centric. I've never been to a Comic-Con. Yeah, Comic-Con. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I, I always thought that that was just kind of a joke. No, uh, yeah, I thought that like, that was just, like... No, like, true blue. I thought that they really were just, like, shitting on... Like, I thought it was I thought it was a joke. I didn't yeah, think... Yeah. I didn't think that uh, people were really going out and stinking at, that, yeah. at those type of places. I, I mean... That's inappropriate. Twenty percent of it is probably on purpose, like ni- like, like you know, people just not knowing how to hygienically take care of themselves, and then like the other like percentage, like eighty percent, is just you're right. They're wearing costumes and they're sweating, and it's just like, bro, be be courteous. Wear 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 deodorant and like it's just like wash your fucking ass. <laughs> yeah. In the morning, like literally, put some soap all over your privates, bro. Yeah. Like it. Listen, it takes two minutes to wash your nuts and ass you ain't even got to wash your hair you ain't even got to wash your face or neck yeah if you wash your underarms and like the places that fucking stink bro you're not gonna stink and it yeah. takes two fucking minutes and like it's so inconsiderate it's like, I, I can't believe this is the direction that the podcast went well I so I, just I just, psa to all i, I so wasn't i so wasn't expecting this at it's, all it's hilarious i <laughs> it's love that it went a, this way I love yeah it. i mean no like it's, it's all cool like i'm not and i'm not even trying to reel it back i'm just fucking 
what well, like the, I said, like, you what know, the like, fuck just happened in this like, fucking podcast studio? Like, yeah. Well, and the funny thing was, was memes uh, and mental health. We uh, we we were also talking about how it uh, it evolved into de evolution. Oh right, so which yeah, is great. so no one out there in the world has actually heard the original recordings of what we were doing. Yeah, which is our very first recordings. We were doing this just Franken cast of trying to talk about invincible the the show yeah. and talk about close enough yeah and maybe mix in one other thing yeah there was one a, like one like mixed berry crunch we thing. were we were trying to do a lot and we were it was it was not it did not quite work out and it was just it was just us getting our fucking us figuring it out in the very beginning it was a hodgepodge of like just uh just asinine ideas who that we thought would be cool but the, the the point is is that we went from doing two in a random to yeah. doing just one to now doing just randoms. Yeah. So it, it, it evolved into something organized and now it's just devolved back into chaos. And I think that's, ex- it's beautiful. I think it's exceptional. It's definitely, uh, it's definitely Rick and Morty esque monkey, DLV. monkey mouth key to success. Ride the waves, yeah, master yeah. the chaos. We, uh, so you were, you were kind of like, we, you know, throwing metaphorical darts at a board and being like, Oh, Let's do this. Let's do that. And then we settled on Demon Slayer, and you immediately was like, "Okay, just just you know, to dip your toes in and watch the first five episodes," which I really appreciate. It was definitely a, a really interesting. Like, uh, it, the first episode will definitely it, it it wastes no time pulling you in. Yeah, it's it's paced pretty quickly. You yeah. know, you're gonna you, you're gonna know. I mean, we're gonna go into it, but you're gonna you're gonna know pretty goddamn quickly whenever you start watching Demon Slayer whether or not you dig the flavor. Yeah. And whether or not you're going to dig the art style, right? Like it's all really clearly defined within the first 25 minutes of, of, of viewership, right? You're gonna you're gonna know what the fuck the show is about, pretty much. Yeah. Um, so now you can expect us to be portaling into Looney Tune from uh, Looney who, Tunes. Uh, yeah, to man, we might go back and watch some of that racist old Looney Tunes shit. We might portal into a future dimension where yeah. we're watching shit that ain't even dropped yet. Yeah. We might portal into like the primal verse. Go yeah, check out. I want to. I'd like to do that. That's you, like go go yeah. check out Gandhi Tarkovsky's primal. Like it, the, I haven't the, seen it, but I have seen the previews, and I, I was going to talk to you about that for a brief second because is it the same guy who did um, what was it called Samurai Jack? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, because the art style is very similar. I believe so. I believe that's and Samurai Jack. I, I is believe very, that's Gandhi very Tarkovsky. Fun, very um, fun. But so the point is, guys, is that we're gonna we're gonna hop into and out of cartoon verses and basically let you know whether or not it's Portal Boys approved. Yeah. And we may ultimately come back and revisit some of the ones that we really like a lot. Like I'm, I know there's at least one point in one arc that I really want to revisit for for Demon Slayer, but we'll we'll see. We may never come back to it. We're, we're it's all yeah. very it's all very fluid right now. The point is that we're we're gonna be taking you guys into and out of random cartoon and anime versus to, to bullshit about what the fuck is going on. And, uh, that's, it's not a, it's not goodbye to Rick and Morty. It's a, let's see what's on the horizon. We, we might even literally portal back into Rick and yeah, Morty and yeah. do, do, you know, a, a season six recap to give it, give it an hour recap or something. Right. Yeah. The, the point is, is I don't necessarily want my creative projects hitched so directly to such a, uh, uh, such an awkward ship. Yeah, exactly. you know what I'm saying. It's just it's just a whole awkward deal, and just yucky. I'd rather talk about Something Demon fun. Slayer yeah, dude, right like, now. Like we want, we want to have fun with this. We we started this as a as an appreciation, not so much for Rick and Morty, but for cartoons. That was what it was. It was about the, the appreciation for before you guys ever got to listen. Guys, that's what yeah, it was. Before you guys ever got to listen to this, we were we were talking about how amazing Invincible was, and the art style was very interesting. Fuck, dude, we should go back and. We should do an Invincible Season 1 recap. Yeah, we should definitely do that. Fuck, that's a good idea. See what I'm saying? This is why this works. I mean, because that caught... That was a YouTube... That was a YouTube clip that caught me. Was uh was um when he's fighting against the kind of like... Uh, guardians invent, of the Globe. Yeah, the Guardians whatever. of the Globe, yeah. Yeah. And he's just like... <laughs> he just like... Hammering Tearing through them, yeah. Yeah, that shit's nuts, bro. I mean, just... It's yeah, spo- that's a hard... Spoilers. Yeah, spoilers if you haven't Which, seen Which, I mean, God, it. Listen... If you're, if you're, if you're, if you're uh, listen, you, you don't, you can't spoil something that's over a year old. You not just that. You're though, only spoiling stuff if, if it's like six weeks or yeah. less. You know what I'm saying? I feel like there's a good six weeks. Yeah. Before you can start making content and you're not like. Ant-Man and, dies. And, no, you're, and you're not, I have no idea. I, I'm just joking. But. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, They're going to be real pissed off if Ant-Man dies. I'm sorry. I was joking. They kill off the rock. Finally. <laughs> the first time ever. Yeah. Yeah. But. 
What so, is that contract that The Rock has? Like, it, it's one single pan, never death, never villain. I have no idea. He has, like, a specific contract. Like, it, it's it's literally, like, it, if you ever watch a Rock movie, it follows the same pattern. And it's written in his contract. That's uh, neat. Always a, always, a, always a good guy. Never a death scene. And just all these different kinds of stuff, you know. Damn, he's like, he's like, I have a brand to manage, and so this is like, you got to fit within the rocks rules. Yeah. And if you fit within he's the c- rocks rules, then then I'll then I'll work on your. He's coming from the WWE, WWF. He's coming from that. So they're 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 you know he's like I'm a baby face. I'll never be a heel. He knows how to write a good contract. I'm sure Vince was probably like, you know. Oh, taught, you, you know. Oh, uh, you know, Vince sent him his his highest recommended lawyer oh yeah, yeah like definitely. they're all they're all lock and step they're all, they're all on the gang together but so to get to the point of this episode yes we're gonna cover the first five episodes of demon slayer first arc first five episodes uh this isn't the entire arc there's over 20 episodes in the first arc but i felt like the first five episodes you know, it, it it was enough to give you like a good taste. You know what I'm saying? Like you you got to see Tanjiro's, you got to see the imp- a- you got to see the impetus for everything, which was uh, his family being killed by mm-hmm. the demon, right? You got to see him go off and uh, get brought into the demon slayer, or you got to see him rather get trained. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Uh, you got to see him uh, go off and fight his first demon. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so there's like a, there's like quite a few like key moments that happen in this first five episodes. Yeah, definitely. That I feel like was enough for you to watch it and you to really you know I said you're gonna know in the at the end of the first episode whether or not you like it or not. But uh, the first five episodes really give you that opportunity, right? Because you get to see what the what the fights look like and what the the special moves that Tanjiro uses. Like whenever he Tanjiro is the main character, by the way. Uh, he swings a sword around and he uses like particular breathing styles to uh, enable his sword you know just water breathing there's various types obviously but he does water and stuff and yeah uh there's a lot you know there's a lot to it i'm um, trying to think of the uh the the trainer's name no oh, that's uru kodaki guru kodaki uru kodaki uru korat uru yeah i'll just say uru uru what i was going to say is uru gives you Gives him a beautiful Call him red mask. Red mask gives you a beautiful bowl. Gives gives uh, him a beautiful bowl of soup before he's set to go and take his journey. That hot pot. That hot pot is what we're going to give you today. A beautiful hot pot of just enjoyability. This I mean that's honestly what those first five episodes. It was a hot pot of just amazing art style, amazing fighting, combat. So that's all, where all, that's, all yeah. the necessary ingredients that they're yeah. going to employ throughout the entire series were employed in this first yeah. five. Episodes. So you definitely got a red red mask hot pot for the first five. episodes. That's a beautiful way to put it. Yeah, we should call this red mask hot pot. I love it. That's what red we're going to call this pot. episode. But so the first episode is called cruelty. Yeah. And uh, basically in this episode, Tanjiro uh, is like going about his business, being like a sweetheart, gathering. I think they like work with coal. Yeah, they 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 work with coal and sell it to the city or sell it out in town so that they can make. Yeah, and he lives profits. up the mountain, right? Yeah, so it's like quite a walk, and it's in Japan, so it's all snowy. It's like a difficult trek. Yeah, and I know that the, that he has what two two younger siblings and one and two two older siblings. Um, he has he has several siblings. Yeah. is the bottom. And the line. two the two younger ones, of course, want to trek with him, and he's like, hey. It's a big journey. Like, like y'all hang out at the crib. Yeah, chill, I'm gonna go chill. hold. It, I'm gonna go hold it down. Yeah, and he definitely ha- he has his responsibilities. He, you know, he, he he's like a, he's like a sweetheart. Yeah, he like just, everyone yeah. who everyone who he runs into, he treats with like the utmost yeah, yeah. Uh, most respect, respect and kindness. And his, yeah. yeah, exactly. He's like out goes out of his way to be kind and respectful. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think there's even a point in one of the episodes where someone tries to give him something and he like refuses to accept it for free and like puts some money in it's their hand. It's a fishing pole, I think, right? Some, or yeah. I think it's uh, some of the bamboo that he oh, uses. Oh, it's the to, bamboo, yeah, for the wicker to, basket. Yeah, that he makes the basket out yeah. of and he just refuses to take it for free. He's like, please accept this money. Yeah. And gets the fuck out of there. So he's he just, just like runs. <laughs> such a sweetheart. Tanjiro is He's honestly, like, the bamboo is old. You can have it for free. He's like, nah. Like, I'm going to pay for this. <laughs> Tanjiro is honestly one of my favorite anime main characters that there are well he's such a sweetheart and he's such a he's so well intended yeah and he's got so much love for his sister it's dope like it, it's really really dope it, well, his 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 characteristics are endearing my introduction to tanjiro and all that and and all that and the actual cartoon um anime uh 
was strange because I'm not used to every element being discussed, which you said is very indicative of getting something from a from a mag. mag Maga. Yeah, so manga, manga. Is, is the so way is manga. the way they would say it. Uh, and yeah, so most of these. Sorry, I'm such a noob. Guys. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, and I might even be saying it wrong. That's yeah. just how I believe it's said. But yeah. Um. So most animes, which an anime is just a cartoon produced in a Japanese animation studio. Yeah. First like, and foremost, like a beaner may. Made in Mexico. Like. That's funny as shit. I'm glad you said that, not me. Because <laughs> uh, I don't get to say that. I can't even repeat that. But uh, it's fun content. Um, but the the point is, is that all animes are cartoons. Not all cartoons are animes. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. And so, like, you're speaking on it truthfully when you call it a cartoon. It's just not as factually yeah, as it could just, be spoken. It's not and the, the most, And there's the beautiful most elements, too, and, 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 and qualities that hold it, that hold the anima, anime into such high esteem. Well, there's particular animation styles. Yeah. You know, like, they, they have their own flavor, right? Like, you can, if you put up, threw a dart at a board and landed on a anime that was produced in a Japanese animation studio and threw a dart at a board and landed on a cartoon that was produced in an American animation studio, they would be clearly different right yeah. like, they, like they have very distinct characteristics and so um you know i actually uh used to i couldn't stand the art styles I yeah, yeah i couldn't stand japanese art styles and i took a whole bunch of lsd and watched Howl's moving castle well and it was fascinatingly beautiful that's that just such a beautiful that. that's just such a beautiful um, even if you're not into the art style, or even if you you can definitely respect you can respect the qualities of it. Howl's Moving Castle, and there's another one out there with the uh, with the with the mask. I think it's a similar one in the same vein. It's the same guys. I yeah, can't remember the name yeah. of that show though. Yeah, and that was a definitely you could you you can you can respect the 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 content without. I've never seen Howl's Moving Castle, and I've yet to see the other one. Uh, but I'm not I'm not a I'm not huge in anime. That's why I said this was very much a first uh, dipping my 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 toe into a vast pool of of beautiful imagination and art. Yeah. So which is which is awesome. I mean because um, like I said when I when I went in I went in. It's the second time I've done that. Right. I did it with Louisiana anime and I'm doing it with this. It's just like with Louisiana anime. I you jumped were in, in the culture. Uh, yeah, I was right. in the culture, and it was like a small dipping your toes into because Louisiana anime wasn't big. It was relatively small for for a con maybe a thousand people exactly yeah um and uh but that this is also sur- surface level five episodes yeah um but um, but important episodes and ones with the, the with, like the ability to to draw you in oh so. there's a lot of world building and shit that went in yeah you know what i'm saying and uh and so basically he goes about his business and he comes back and his family's dead slaughtered and uh but nezuko one of his sisters is uh still just like barely hanging on for dear life and it turns out as he's like trying to take her to town for medicine that she's a demon yeah and he's literally carrying her and running as fast as he can oh yeah he's he's trying to save his sister's fucking life um but it turns out she's a demon and then uh they run into uh, a demon slayer uh uh tamioka and tamioka is essentially telling him giving him the rundown that demons exist they have always have existed and there ain't no coming back from it yeah there ain't no coming back from it and he's not having any of it he's like i'm gonna get my sister back (laughs) yeah tantra was like bro they're like we're gonna figure something out he he he, first he like begs and definitely uh, the uh the the grieving the grieving uh yeah tommy oga's like no you're not gonna fuck no that doesn't work here yeah. And so then, uh, oh, I think he like he like he's like no one you know you don't get to grieve you don't get to cry like this is it like it's it's not up or shut up kind of moment here like, and so bro Tanjiro with the axe, that was such a key such a clever play just so beautiful man like he I mean because even it caught him off guard where he's like oh wow so he's he essentially threw the axe, and then ran at me knowing that my that my ability to focus on one particular thing wasn't going to be as key as it should be it's cunning yeah very cunning. he has cunning that's the way to communicate the type of intelligence he also has this interesting ability to uh to to smell oh he has extraordinary yeah he has this ability to like uh, yeah so he was like halfway up the mountain and could smell the human blood yeah that's what so he like had this moment of panic and ran all the way to the uh yeah. to the house because he could smell the human blood so yeah he's he's got like a hound dog mega yeah, super he's nose. got yeah so he's uh that that's essentially like his his um little superpower his little superpower to 
to definitely and to smell out these uh these these demons and when he's having this this minor mad minor major battle for the to save his sister i would say it's minor in the sense like in the grand scheme of the it's really it's really not a fight yeah that's what like, i got yeah. tommy Oki yeah fucking got that fool so fast yeah. especially at that stage in the game but uh but he sees he sees a quality in him and he immediately dubs him that he wants him to become and, a demon slayer and also he uh he sees he sees nezuko not attack tanjiro yeah and yeah. he sees nezuko not attack him yeah and so at this point he's able to validate tanjiro's story and uh he knocks tanjiro out um and tanjiro wakes up and there's a note saying basically you need to go seek out urukodaki it's at mount sagiri mount yeah. sagiri is the place where he ultimately does all of his training uh and with red mask and <clears throat> homie has bound nezuko's mouth with a bamboo stick of bamboo and that's how you basically see nezuko throughout the duration of the series and she cannot be touched by the sun oh yeah yeah so in this in this verse which they find this out a little later but i mean it's fine um because we're not necessarily going over it all literally is a uh, that uh sun is absolutely lethal for demons and uh, it's not like it's not like oh, it kind of burns a little bit like no no like bruh if she if the sun touches this bitch she's dying yeah like there's no if ands or buts about it she's fucking dying and so uh it's like mega mega bad uh for for nezuko and also uh this is the first instance of anybody ever seeing at, at least that we know of right now uh where a demon isn't like necessarily consumed by their bloodlust right yeah. like they're they're able to maintain some degree of sentience and also while nezuko and tanjiro were uh having their struggle as nezuko was trying to overpower him she got bigger yeah she yeah she definitely gets like an ability to to grow in, in size yeah so now nezuko at this point has the ability even if it's not necessarily super under her control to get bigger and smaller and right? uh yeah there was uh there's also a, a, instead of the bloodlust cor like making her do these unspeakable things or to regenerate her 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 batteries however you want to say this yeah she, so, she, so demons she, are regenerative yeah she and, she trades it off for sleep yeah she so, goes into a deep comatose sleep yeah so typically demons would uh accelerate their regenerative process by consuming human flesh but Nezuko has the unique ability to uh, regenerate with through sleep, and she can basically bank up regenerative properties by sleeping for an extended period of time. Yeah. And uh, so at one point she like sleeps for the entire time while he's gone training. Yeah, he's and shit. training. Yeah. But um, so he comes back, and he definitely like he's so he's so excited and just upset because he's like he didn't even know if Nezuko was going to come out of particular sleep that she had been in yeah oh he yeah it was, deal with these things. oh it's a big moment yeah. that's actually like one of the final moments of this entire thing that we're going through right now and so uh this takes us about to the next episode where uh it's called trainer sakanji urukodaki which is basically just you're going to be trained by urukodaki red and, mask is definitely just such an amazing character yeah he, i i've instantly enjoyed him yeah he's really good um he and like the the way he slaps the fuck out of Tanjiro mm. for not killing that demon. Yeah, yeah. You know, like it's like the that's like the tough love that homie needed. Yeah. Like, uh, bro, you're about to go for, like fight fucking demons, bro. You need to nut the fuck up, homie. And um was it two demons or a single demon? It was one demon who uh they it, it managed to grow arms out of its head yeah remember yeah. It, it had a, it had a whole weird thing yeah. go down and even as it was decapitated it was kind of it was kind of lingering yeah yeah well so it it wasn't that he was necessarily perfectly decapitated he uh it, it was to the point where it was still able to regenerate and it grew arms out of its head yeah he had it he had arms, it yeah. stuck to a tree yeah that was pretty and funny. the sun came up and that's that's whenever we find out just how lethal the sun is for demons because it just it yeah, incinerates it, that fool he like he like fights it off a mountain cliff as well right or am i imagining that no uh no he doesn't throw off a mountain cliff it's a uh, it's it's tacked to a tree and he's standing there with well i thought the body him because the body and him continue to fight. oh I, th I think he may throw the body off a cliff yeah, yeah. the body continues to yeah fight i think there i for think like that 30... i think you may be right about that yeah. but i don't quite recall but um the point is that uh, this demon had also like killed a family and it was yeah it was like eating them as tanjiro walked up and 
Uh, while Tanjiro's struggling with trying to figure out what to do with this demon, uh, Urukodaki Red Mask buries the family and pays their respects. And ultimately, um, you know, Urukodaki gives him that big pep talk about, you know, what it's going to be like and all this and that. And Yeah, like, it's not going to, this isn't going to be an easy thing for you to do. This isn't going to be fun. It isn't going to be, you know, it's going to be exa- fucking dangerous. Yeah, it's and dangerous. A, and a yeah. moment's hesitation is the difference in life and death. Yeah. And so, he definitely has some hesitance. He's like, he's trying to see what, uh, what, what the original Demon Slayer saw in him to, you know, because he has. Oh, Urukodaki is definitely yeah. having his doubts at this yeah, point, and yeah. is vocal about it. Yeah, and so he. Uh, but ultimately, he winds up he trusting winds up, yeah. Tamioka. He, yeah, he tells him that he's going to train him. And he literally makes him catch up with like he he just takes off running and he, <laughs> he just makes books it. Yeah, makes Tanjiro keep up, and of course Tanjiro is literally carrying Nezuko. Yeah. And so he's double fucked, and you know, and he's also been on this long hike, and so he's just got all these disadvantages. Yeah, he's just. But uh, and and Urukodaki is fucking flying, and so it's just this hellacious trek, and they get to the top of the mountain, and Urukodaki just trains the fuck out of this fool. He makes him go up and down the mountain, and the mountain is just latent with traps, dude, and it's making him do just... like a thousand swing swords at a time at, at the end of the day, and just and this is when uh, insane this... amount of training. This is whenever. Um, his smell, his ability to have that, that smell, it's it starts to, starts to basically make threads, so he's able to smell where where uh, originally people have touched, so that he's able to find these traps. Well, yeah, and uh, well, the thread is he's able to see uh, the opening thread where he can he can see his kill shot. Oh, okay, I thought that he could also do that with the traps. That the, that he, he just could... can sniff them out. Okay, he literally can sniff them out. Yeah, like s- sniffing them out. Yeah, literally smell that trap. Yeah, over there. yeah. Which is dope. Um, but, I mean, this goes on and on and on. And, uh, you know, he gets better and better and better at it. And he winds up having to start running the course with the sword in his hand, mm-hmm. which throws him off, makes him start getting hit again. Um, but he's just training his ass off and getting stronger. And also the air is real thin, so he's, like, training he's at training, altitude. Yeah. Um, there's a bunch of shit going on in the training. Um, and the ghost says here, after letting Nezuko rest, Urukodaki puts Tanjiro through tests to prove his worthiness by climbing up and descend- descending the hazardous trap-infested Mount Sagiri. Uh, Tanjiro succeeds, and after uh, recalling the letter from Tamioka... Uh, yeah, so at this point, we've kind of stepped ahead, but Urukodaki effectively, by the end of this episode, accepts uh, Tanjiro as his student, and mm-hmm. that takes us to the next episode, which is... Uh, entitled Sabito, uh, Sabito and Makumo, which this shit right here. Yeah, I never caught the, that. That was such a great. Notice. This is this is like part of like where they punch you. Yeah. So uh, basically, once Tanjiro gets to a certain level of trained, Urukodaki's trained him everything that he's got to train him, and now he's got one last task, and it's to cut through this massive fucking boulder, and Urukodaki tells him that's what he has to do, and walks the fuck off. And we never hear from this motherfucker again. <laughs> yeah. And so, or at least, at least not for like, not till this motherfucking boulder gets cut through. And so Tanjiro is clearly just struggling. He's trying to cut through a giant boulder with a fucking katana. And that's not normally possible. Right. And so these two so demon slayer swordsmen who turn out to be ghosts yeah which is definitely a, a, turn out to be fucking ghosts you, you find that out and you're just kind of like what a fucking back. twist oh fuck yeah they're ghosts in this verse yeah they'll fucking come help you train <laughs> and uh so they uh tanjiro goes through six months of harsh training on the mountain uh, he also, this is whenever he learns the total concentration and water breathing. Yeah, which that water breathing was really cool. That was definitely one of those, uh, I, I assume that I assume that as the show progresses, water breathing isn't the only tool in, in his belt. Yeah, well, so uh, actually it, it pretty much is. Oh, okay. Um, well, so he, at some point he winds up developing what's called the... Uh, uh, he basically gets like a not a fire breathing but like a sun breathing technique that he gets from his, that he got from his dad. Okay. Where his dad did this dance and he recalls the he recalls the dance and it like activates some shit and so like he gets some real cool shit going down the road. Spoiler yeah. alerts! I told you, fucking spoilers, bitch. But uh, so it does get elaborated upon, but it's like not like you'd expect, right? Like 
it, it's not like he just gets to combine fire or he gets yeah, to it's, combine it's, it's earth not or gets to combine anything, wind. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's got it's slightly different how how he's got something unique. He's got something like really unique going on to the to the rest of the verse. Mm-hmm. Um, and most people are only possessing one, right? Like, and and it's like all kind all kinds of different shit. Honestly, yeah, yeah, like yeah. there's. It's all it's all kinds of cool shit. You just have mm-hmm. to watch the show, man. There's yeah, so many definitely. there's so many cool swordsmen in this show who have so many cool techniques. And like if you liked the water breathing stuff, like there's all kinds of other breathing techniques that have all kinds of cool shit. And uh so like at this point we've only seen a couple of the of the water breathing techniques. There's also a bunch of water breathing techniques. I think there's nine or ten uh water breathing techniques that I've seen at the point where I'm at in the show. Mm-hmm. And like Bro, so I'm get pretty fucking crunk, bro. Like it gets, it gets like shit gets pretty wild. Like it, get, it gets good. Like I mean, you saw the the uh, the entertainment district arc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That final couple episodes, how? Mm-hmm. Pff, yeah, it gets it definitely. This amps shit, up. Get, this shit gets insane, it amps bro. Up and it definitely gets into a point. I mean, uh, you like I said, you had me watch these what first five episodes, and like I said, this is dipping your toe and in, into a deep pool. You know, it really is. But so. Uh, at any rate, um, it gets to where Tanjiro isn't even really trying to slice the boulder anymore. Now he's having to sword fight uh, Sabuto, and so there's these two. Sabuto is the is the boy, uh, the kind of older boy, yeah. and uh, was it a Makomo? Makomo? Makomo is the like younger girl. And the younger girl's more or less like there for moral support, gives them some gives them some inspiring words and stuff here and there. But really, yeah. really, Sabato is the one who they're like fighting constantly. And fucking Tanjiro has a real sword, and Sabato has a fucking like ghost sword, wooden yeah. sparring ghost stick. Wood. You know what I'm Wo- saying? Ghost stick. Yeah, ghost stick. And uh, man, they fight for just months, dude. Like, and they just they. Uh, yeah, after six months of failing to make a dent, he starts to lose hope, and that's whenever Sabuto comes in and criticizes him for his weakness. And uh, they all like train and train and train. And finally, one of these days, Sabuto goes to have the fight, but he has a real sword. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's like, You, you basically ready? And uh, Whenever they went for their exchange, Tanjiro actually landed a strike and it cut the mask in half of Sabato. And uh, at that point, it reveals that Tanjiro cut through the, the boulder. boulder. Yeah. And uh, at that point, Tanjiro is more or less just like confused about where they went, like because they're they're gone. Um. Oh yeah, so the two commend them for his success and vanish into a haze, uh, and then it's revealed that his slash had actually sl- sliced the boulder in half, and so they c- they tell him good job, right? Yeah, he's just they, thinking they that he cut Sabuto. Him for it, yeah. He's just thinking that he cut Sabuto's mask in half, and then they're like, "All right, we're gonna dip and vanish off into the fucking woods," and then he turns around and realizes the boulder's cut in half. And the 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 the, the sister is definitely excited, like her her joy of him cutting that boulder in half is. Is uh, the sister? Uh, well, um, the, the the I'm not the sister, but the uh, what was the, oh Makamo? Makamo, the the girl. Yeah, the girl Makamo is definitely excited. Like you can, you can definitely feel like her, her, you know, whatever keeps whatever keeps her from or whatever. At this point, she's got joy. You know, she's yeah. She's, it's actually you know, filled her up. Yeah, it's actually filled her I up. Mean, and I mean, bro, the way uh the way Sabato smiles, bro, like you can tell he's really proud. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, tell, it's, it's like, a beautiful moment really, in, really in, in triumph and overcoming this this adversity that had been plaguing him for I mean, six months. Months, yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so, in in turn of him cutting the boulder, he is now able to get at the hot pot. Right? That's that's been yeah. Here. I mean, at this point, Urukaraki's yeah. shocked yeah. that he. Should, I mean, he admits later, "I wasn't expecting you to do it. I was trying yeah. to." give you a task you couldn't do so that i wouldn't have to see any more fucking kids die yeah. during f- fucking final selection to become demon slayers and this is like you said they have the hot pot yeah right they eat and eat and eat and just have a great evening and, and he tells them and like, nezuko's still asleep nezuko's been sleeping this whole time yeah he was training in the woods for six months nezuko's sleep the whole time like at this point 
they don't even know if Nezuko is gonna wake up, bro. Yeah. It's like a it's like a problem. And he tells him too. He's like, enjoy your meal because this is as soft as it's gonna get. Like now, now you're going into you know you're going into the shit. Like so. yeah, homie, you thought you thought what you've been going through is hard right yeah. now, homie. You're about to. You're about to go uh, from the frying pan to the fire. Yeah. Like, so, it's a, you thought that frying pan was hot. Well, welcome to the fire that's yeah. heating the frying pan, homie. And like, so. This is incineration zone. He ends up, he's still, he, I mean, she's still, uh, he's, his sister's still sleeping and he does go, he goes off to the competition. Yeah. Final, with, uh, final selection. Yeah, final and selection. That, that's actually the name of the next episode. Final selection. Yeah. And uh, like we said, Urukodaki shot by Tanjiro's achievement. Um, and so he goes to this, uh, he goes to this spot, um, and there's a whole bunch of others, like, I think they said like it was 40 or 60 or some shit. 40, if I'm not mistaken. I think you're I think right. 40. Yeah. I think that's what, that's what Beckham's Because it my goes from well. 40 to four, right? It was actually five. 40 to five. Okay. Yeah. 40 but, to five. but you never see the fifth one. Yeah. That is true. Right. Yeah. You never see the fifth one. Yeah. Uh, I, and you won't that, exactly say why. Well, uh, you get introduced to them yeah. later, and it's like... Is that the one with the hog head? Okay. Yeah, that's fucking Inosuke. Inosuke is one of my favorite fucking... I, I didn't want to even say his name because I'll digress into fucking fangirling for Inosuke. Because mm. Inosuke is such a fun fucking character. Is that a mask or is that an actual, like... Is he like some sort of That's hybrid? the helm of the mountain god. That's, that's what that is. That's the helm of the mountain god. Okay. Yeah, that's what that is. That, that's a, that's a so, helmet sounds beautiful yeah that's sounds, that's, sounds... that's what he called it. it like that's what he called it it's the helm of the mountain god okay yeah that's yeah so, so that... you never see that you never see the fifth person i thought four because i only saw four yeah you have there's... these real creepy twins uh one uh one with dark hair one with bluish light hair um talking and i wouldn't say unisons they definitely they they definitely but they like one says a sentence yeah. the other says, it's like they're yeah the, there's a know. give and take between them of you know of them letting know letting them know that that uh at this point when they when they get to final selection there's uh what are they called uh, is it lavender what is it westeria 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 and the westeria keeps the demons from entering that area but it also is planted all around there so that they can't leave the yeah mountain. basically this is happening at the top of a mountain and there's yeah. an entire ring of West Syria planted around the, the base of the mountain yeah. so that demons can neither go up or down the mountain. Yeah. But what well, you can go past the West Syria and there are demons in there yeah. um, because they have them trapped in there for the sake of performing, for, yeah, uh, yeah. basically throwing fucking would be demon slayers in there to see who will survive. Rich, rich, uh, rich Japanese and a uh, uh, rich Japanese men betting on who's going to be the next demon slayer. Yeah, I mean, there's got to be good. There's got to be a good payout if you bet on the right one. Right. I mean, it's 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 one out of ten at best, right? It's a squid gaming the Demon Slayer universe. Yeah, but um, so it's basically revealed that they have to survive seven days out here in this environment yeah. within the ring of this Wisteria, and uh, man, shit goes fucking sideways. And he immediately has a really like. I wouldn't I don't know if it's genius or just he has an idea of what what needs to get done so he wants to go east right yeah uh, yeah so his, get... his idea is that he wants to head as as far east as possible so yeah. that he'll be so the uh, sun will come up sooner. he wants to be at the at the place where he can get into the sunlight as quickly as possible and he comes and and he comes across at least four other demons and his three other demons and is dispatched fairly quickly. Yeah, yeah. He 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 kind of has a moment where he kind of hesitates a little bit, but he he chops down a demon or two pretty fucking yeah. easily. And then he comes across the hand demon, which is just I mean, it's essentially just a blob with hands. Green, red fingernails, um big nasty python eyes. Yeah, just yeah, and veins um, in his head. He, and like his mouth, his arms that are crossed, yeah. it's all very awkward. He uh, he essentially has one of the demon slayers. It's like by the scruff by, of his yeah, neck yeah, and yeah. he's just dead as fuck. Yeah, yeah, and he consumes him. Eats him whole. And then as that's happening, there's another demon slayer that is about to be consumed. Who's just terrified. Just, just like frozen. Yeah. Frozen terrified. And so he, um, he gives, he... Kind of is playing with his food for a little bit, 
which gives uh, gives him the opportunity. Yeah, he eats the one and is kind of mocking the other one yeah. about how he's about to eat him and there's nothing yeah. he can really do. And so that gives him an opportunity to kind of now have an introduction. And he immediately, boom, he notices that he's wearing the, f- is it the fox mask? Or the- yeah, well, so Tanjiro comes in from the side and like slices off Homie's arms yeah. as he goes to get the other Demon Slayer. Yeah. Or something like that. I think he may even. I think you're right, yeah. I think he may of- even have him and like he slices him either way. Like yeah. the point is that Tanjiro actually has to slice this fucking demon in order to save this yeah. other dude. And, yeah, like you said, immediately the hand demon recognizes Tanjiro as one of Red Mask Urukodaki's disciples because Urukodaki gives these masks that have these protective spells on them called warding masks to all of his students. And apparently this demon had been captured by Urukodaki. Like, he is in there literally because of of Urukodaki and he goes about trying to take out Urukodaki's students. Yeah, he's consumed 12, I think is what he said. 13 maybe? 13. Yeah, I think it's 13 13, and Tanjiro was going to be the 14. Yeah, 13 13 of of his protégés. Protégés. And at and that point, that's whenever he reveals that he ate Sabuto and yeah, Makumo. Yeah. And Tanjiro was realized, taken aback by that he was fighting a ghost, that he was training with a ghost, that he he became essentially friends with these these spirits, you know. Yeah, it's a trip. And uh, it's it's definitely heart wrenching too because he knows that as important as pivotal as these people were were, and he did meet them, he'll never meet them on a physical plane, right? So it's like. You know, it's it's a little heart wrenching because it's definitely nuts. It was definitely a gut wrenching moment yeah. where it's like, oh, fuck, those yeah. two were dead, eaten by this dude, and like they didn't they didn't die easily, right? Like, uh, uh, he uh he literally the the hand demon literally ripped the little one limb from limb. Yeah, he ripped the yeah. And then uh, homie, he uh he punched his face in. Yeah. He- and he wanted to do the same to him as well. Yeah, he told he told Tundra, exactly Tundra, what he was yeah, he's do, like Tundra, I'm gonna punch your face in like I did to your to uh, to the other prodigy. Um, at this point, but what the, what's really awesome is that he, like I said, he's playing with this food, but he's also because because it goes from this anime style, he's def- he's giving kind of like a background to like who and what he is and like why he was you know like. You know, so he's giving this kind of synopsis of like, well, what I don't think he. Did. It's not that he was giving. That. Oh, of course, it's you a, know it's what I mean. It, it, yeah, it gives you a flashback. Yeah, it, I mean, it, animes have a big thing about giving you cutbacks and flashbacks. Yeah, I'm to not like particularly saying him as, a, as an individual. Yeah, yeah I just want to. I, I just wanted. To, I just wanted to indicate for anybody who's yeah. listening that like. It's this not, dude isn't like standing there giving this long lecture about yeah, his yeah, life right. yeah, exactly. to this guy he's about to eat. No, it yeah. just like in an instant kind of gives you a flashback and shows. All this shit. And, yeah. And I don't know, like, I, the, the character, not to jump too far ahead, he um, was never, was n- never really cared about and, ne- and had the ability to never feel, th- to never, like, he was touching all these people, but had no ability, no, no ability to feel anymore. I mean, being a demon or whatever, he'd had no ability to feel. And, uh, and, and in his last, and in his death, all he wants is for his hand to be held, which is definitely incredible like his brother used yeah, yeah, to yeah like his brother and then in to. that moment he remembers that he had a brother yeah like like you have to understand that like these demons get everything about what makes them human stripped away yeah. in like the demonification process yeah um and like which is maybe yeah. why maybe why his sister is able to hold that because maybe she, maybe he's the ability to like keep her centered and grounded well there's some I got some ideas on that. You know what I'm saying? There's some yeah. there's some but we ain't gotta digress. No 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 we're gonna just digress well, too because, hard. This is just a, could, this, is a, could, this is a novice talking I could, to I could, someone. I could of, go off into my theories about why yeah. I think that Nezuko is doing the thing. Well, we'd have to discuss all kinds of things that happen way later in a series. This is a novice just, strictly yeah, talking man, to someone just, to who may have an idea of like, oh, you 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 might be going in the right direction. Exactly. You know? Know? And so I'm really trying to keep it to like the first five episodes yeah. and maybe stuff that's getting revealed in the next few. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, one thing that is definitely made really clear is that whoever is making these demons is coming after people. Like all these demons are people who've been transformed into yeah. demons by a, another demon, effectively. Yeah. And this, 
progenitor of demons are go is going after people who are in the most like fucked up situations like people who are at their lowest i know that at a certain point you did have me watch a pivotal fight scene and one of the people one of the people who was turned into a demon was literally stripped of everything and that's and that's pretty much the case it's like how they build deadpools have you ever seen the way they build deadpool armies it's, it's essentially the same thing like a dog like there, there's like a deadpool dog or a deadpool cat or something like that and it essentially like it's thrown off a bridge kicked in the face ran over by a car and in its last moments it's like uh picked up and like taken care of and like turned into you know turned into a deadpool character I, I might actually be getting that wrong i think it's actually the the batman who laughed i think does that not the not but deadpool. The, the point is that there's this like syndrome where you know yeah. you, you, it's like this savior syndrome right and mm -hmm. but and so the point is that he he's coming to people who's who's giving them demonhood is literally better than a continuation of their current circumstance yeah. like yeah he is that there's like this knack yeah for finding people who are in circumstances where like they were just praying for death or something yeah you know what i'm saying and he just comes in at the right moment and swoop and do something he's like the fucking orochimaru of this verse which i know you don't understand that reference orochimaru is like the big bad of uh Naru of naruto, naruto or at least in you know they're in the first couple arcs right uh but he he has a, a pinch on for doing the same thing yeah. getting people and that's like kind of a it's kind of an anime trope it happens in a lot of animes right where like it's a, a lot of these bad guys they go and show how they were just like us and they got manipulated the, the, the joker's one bad day kind of thing well, exactly like they just get manipulated at the yeah. right moment at the right time and then they're roped into this lifetime of decisions after and like it's it, it, and it's neat how by the end of it you could see that to some degree that demon in yeah. its last moments had been able to uh reactualize some of its humanhood yeah and uh, after and that's, that's after, what's really neat after a huge battle like let's not negate that this was a beautiful well just thought out i hope i'm not too close to the mic here well good. thought out really just powerful just a, a person a, 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 i mean him coming to understand his strength and you know it was, just, it was a really beautiful moment i mean because yeah he's literally using I mean, he literally looks every, down at his calloused hands yeah. and it's like whoa yeah i mean he he i mean as he, he has no ne neck into which to cut yeah i mean so. he, i mean he's literally as he's going to cut it, he's like his neck is so thick can i even cut it yeah and uh, not even him, uh, uh, Sabato and Makamo are talking. And Makamo's like, his neck is so thick, can it even be cut? Yeah. And Sabato's sitting on top of the boulder that's cut in half. And he's like, I don't know, man, but he cut through this boulder. Yeah. And it's the biggest of them all. So if he can cut through this boulder, I think he's got it. And then Tanjiro slices that motherfucker's head off, dude. And uh, the, whatever, the, whatever that character it is. It happens so quick. Yeah. And whatever that character is that <laughs> completely just like bitch is completely 100% bench made was very frustrating but he ended up making it to the end too right through happenstance i mean oh my god you're talking was gonna about die. you're talking about zenetsu yeah zenetsu oh my god zenetsu such a fun character bro uh at this point have you even gotten to see zenetsu like do anything no right. i haven't so like zenetsu to oh me is a cow is a coward oh my god zenetsu is a coward yeah but zenetsu to me is a coward i mean he gives all the qualities of coward behavior but bro whenever shit gets too real and he has to overcome it like you have to understand that like bravery is the overcoming of fear yeah of course. and he has a lot of that yeah and so bro like whenever fucking push comes to shove like bro when, whenever whenever zenetsu turns the fucking corner and it's time to fucking fight bro god fucking damn it is zenetsu fun what's that uh is a uh, you ever watch dodgeball? Yeah. The, the the character that's getting like cucked by his Japanese wife. It's been so long. I don't necessarily remember that. So I mean, yeah, it's been years. But like, he's getting cucked by his Japanese wife, and like, literally, she's making out with someone in the crowd as he's like playing dodgeball. That's what I kind of get of like someone who's just kind of like beaten down by life, but it, but like, is able to overcome and like really participate because of like circumstances around him. I mean, I think that's probably fair, right? Yeah. Like, he uh, later on, it's revealed, like, he ain't want no part of none of this. Yeah. Like, yeah, Zenetsu yeah. 
This has been like a non-consensual thing for Zanetsu this whole fucking time. Oh, uh, like it's the same thing for him because he's kind of like a he's uh, uh it's the guy who plays Bill on King of the Hill. I don't know if you ever nice. seen. Yeah, he's he's just uh, he's always kind of like in any movie that he is, he kind of always plays like this kind of Billish character. Billish character, yeah. So, oh, but yeah, so it's kind of like he he's forced to be in the dodgeball competition more than he wants to be in the dodgeball competition. That's funny. Know? That's that's Zanetsu. Yeah. yeah. Like he's forced to be in the Demon Slayer Corps much more than he wants to be in the Demon Slayer Corps. What, what an like what a what I mean I really appreciate like where we where we kind of come together on like Rick and Morty as like uh, the show that kind of incorporated the Portal Boys. I like when when someone can I can appreciate I can say oh, I really appreciate you showing me this because I knew about Demon Slayer. I can't think that, with with the exception of like maybe f- like fifty to forty five year olds. No offense to y'all, people who I consider parents. Uh, my parents don't know anything about Demon Slayer. Demon Slayer is one of those. I could probably throw a rock at someone who wears Demon Slayer merch and knows Demon Slayer stuff. It's definitely a well loved, well. Oh, it's like at the top of the spear yeah. of the new gen. Yeah, I mean, everybody's when, everybody's into it. When you when you think when I think of like pivotal animes, I think of Attack on Titan. I That's think a of good Demon one. Slayer. It's a good one. We could portal into. Yeah. We could portal into any of those. And uh, maybe old school Death Note. Like the Death Note. Death Note was really Death yeah. Note. Like uh, the ones that cut. Death Note. Caught, like, Death Note normal, was really, like, really dice. like ahead of its time. Like it was like the cutting edge whenever it came out by a wide margin. Yeah, I definitely see one that caught like the. the these are the ones that I say caught the caught like the the mainstream zeitgeist. Like not ones that live in the live in the shadow, like Hell Girl or different iterations of Gundam or Cowboy Bebop. Even like Cowboy Bebop. As much as people wanted to to say that it caught it caught the zeitgeist, I still think that it's one of those that's beloved by it's, it's i've never seen it yeah it's beloved by you people know? who love it it's it's, it's it, not it's, a, it's like got a cult following yeah it's, it's, not, it's, it's not like it hasn't turned the corner into being widespread yeah. like, you don't see people you don't see cowboy be about merch at walmart yeah exactly that's exactly you know what it. i'm saying that's like a little what a is it, the femme laquita is that the one that i'm thinking of no that's a different one i have no idea no there, there's another i'm sorry but anyways you'd, you'd know it if you saw it because she, she she rides in on the motorcycle um and uh scarlett johansson played her on uh, the movie adaptation of it, and it's a video game. It's it's a it's a anime. Um, Scarlett Johansson played played her on uh, the movie um, version, the 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 American movie version of it. Well, while you look that up, I'll I'll go ahead and start off on episode five. That way, you can yeah. you can take your time and we can keep it moving. Um, so at this point, Tanjiro has killed the hand demon, right? The hand demon, um, basically. Uh, fades away Tanjiro senses the scent of sadness on it and uh, holds the demon's hand as it fades away and like literally puts its hand to his forehead and prays to God for uh, for the his for him to basically if he gets reincarnated to at least not have to be a demon next time Mm -hmm. and uh, like the human form of the demon in this purgatorial black space sees the light and runs towards it which and, is his and, brother yeah and it's his, and it's his life. brother who he killed after becoming a demon uh was in the afterlife holding the holding the lantern for him and mm-hmm. they and uh his brother held his hand right like yeah. he asked for he calls, him, and, calls him a chicken or something like that and they and they walked off yeah. into infinity together yeah it's a beautiful moment it's, dope, it's a touching man. moment i mean like to t- because at any given point red mask is basically saying these people aren't human and he can find Ta- tanjiro the, fucking tanjiro, knows better man yeah tanjiro. he finds the humanity in them and is willing to forgive and pray for them yeah it's dope he's yeah. such a he's such a he's such a wholesome character like the fact that he can still ghost in the shell was what i was talking about by the way oh nice yeah. okay yeah that's so, one of those I, that I, caught, like i've the, never seen any of that yeah that's what i'm saying that didn't catch the cultural zeitgeist but was one of those animes that like enough people know but it's not demon slayer you know what i mean yeah but uh this is the way that he was able to tanjiro's capacity for empathy mm-hmm. is the is his most endearing quality to Definitely. me that's like man the fact that he's able to know that there's some humanity left in there and, and go to bat for it that's dope definitely but uh so tanjiro at this point he's gonna beat the biggest baddest demon in the whole place he's running through slicing up demons trying to question them to figure out how to cure nezuko but he keeps failing at that um but ultimately the sun catches a couple of them i mean because he's questioning them so hard yeah yeah he's and the sun comes up uh but 
ultimately he winds up surviving and like we mentioned earlier there's only five survivors but yeah. we only see four of them yeah but the girls say congratulations to all five of you mm -hmm. uh, and there's one girl who's just very very quiet and has like mm -hmm. a butterfly on her finger there's one dude who's like a real asshole who like is like i want my fucking sword now yeah, and like grabs the, the girl by the hair and yeah. tanjiro almost breaks his arm because man like again where tanjiro's like fucking hand off her man and like yeah, he just squeezes just enough yeah. to let him know like he just squeezes just enough to let him know that well, it's just he's yeah. just doing right. Like yeah. they know you can't you can't beat up a little girl in front of Tanjiro. It ain't going down. Mm -hmm. It ain't going down in front of Tanjiro like yeah. that. You know what I'm saying? And like, and like on that same level, he's also able to empathize with a fucking demon on the way out. Like, yeah. bro, he's a good guy on every frontier. And uh, then uh, there's Zenetsu, who uh, is the coward, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, and then there's Tanjiro, so that's four. And then there's the fifth one who you can't see at the time. They never actually show you, but it winds up being Inosuke, who's the hog mask with the, with with the two swords that are serrated. Um, and he's man, one of my fucking favorite characters of all time. Yeah, I, I saw a guy make a serrated blade to see how it would what would work. Mm. It was pretty neat. You know. Yeah, I mean, it's it's fun. It's it's novel. But uh, at this point, uh they have them pick out the element in which... yeah the, the metal that they're going to use to make the sword like mm -hmm. you you pick out that hunk of metal they're going to turn that hunk of metal into a sword for it's you like, i think it's like a week or something so many days so many days i think it's two weeks two something weeks, like yeah. that either way it's it's an amount of time yeah right enough for him to traverse back to the home right yes yeah, so they're gonna they're, they're sending the sword to urukotaki's yeah. house and uh as tanjiro shows up at the house nezuko kicks the door off the hinges walks out sees him tanjiro freaks out and he like they, she starts running towards him and he goes running towards her and he like falls right at the last moment and he goes to get up and as he goes to get up she just hugs him yeah he's literally he's literally remarking on how exhausted he is yeah he's like oh, he's like i think i asked was there any particular thing about his uniform? Because he's like, my uniform feels heavy. And I was like, is there any particular thing I need to know about the uniform? And you're like, no, he's just, homie's exhausted. He's like, yeah, fought, he's just fucking fought dying. demons and d upon demons and ran. It's like, now this whole uniform in this bag over here is way too heavy. Yeah. It was so yeah. heavy. It's like, at this point, the air is heavy. You know, everything's weighing this man down. It's some wild shit that's happening right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. As we as we as we talk, it's playing in the background, yeah, which is just kind of further than where Mikey's at. Though. Yeah, this is just that. kind of fun to kind of glance up and see this uh, beautiful this, artwork. This bitch is about to get fucked up. Look at oh that. yeah, man, she's just like. Oh man, that ain't no bueno. seizing. Yeah, but uh, this this Muzong. And I guess he just the, created that's a the demon. Big bad. Nah, he gave her too much blood. He he was an asshole about oh, it. He wasn't well. trying to turn her into a demon. He was trying to do this to her. He just m melted her. Yeah, bro. Turn that bitch into nothing. Hit her with that Lochnar treatment, bro. Oof, that's gross. Yeah, bro. That's what's coming, bro. That's what. That's what. <laughs> yeah. That's what's coming, people. You can't see what's happening on the screen now, but there's shit happening. You ever? There's you ever? Uh, you ever get a chance and you watch uh, Kung Fu Hustle? He looks like a some. He looks like one of the cats from Kung Fu Hustle. It looks like fucking knockoff demon Michael Jackson. Me. Yeah, that's what he, that's what Kung Fu Hustle's kind of like. Oh, dope. Fuck. Kinda okay. All right. Dope. We're on the same page. And kind of like dancing like Michael Jackson. And Bro, when uh, when Uru Kodaki spotted Tanjiro, he literally just dropped the wood. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He had been chopping wood and was lugging wood around, and he saw Tanjiro and just fucking dropped everything. Literally just dropped everything. Yeah. And embraced him and was crying. Dude was crying. Literally was like, I didn't expect you to come back. Yeah, so well, many he, the, the, so the, many kids have not come back. The, he got a, like, externally, the demon, or like, miles away. You could you could feel it in uh, in Red Mask's soul. He was able to get a rise not only out of, out of Tantra, right? Out Tanjiro, right? Yeah. Tanjiro. Tanjiro. Uh, he was able to get a rise out of him because he's like, your master has sent, you know, tens of kids to their slaughter you know maybe i wouldn't say 100 but maybe tens of kids to their slaughter uh, 13 Thir 13 uh, at kids, least yeah. at least to him yeah, alone yeah 13 kids to his slaughter like and to the point where the, where in the mist there are 13 souls that were and so freed. That, that's what makes me feel like it's well again that's only that's only to that one demon yeah you know what i'm saying but but so yeah that's what so he essentially was able to get a rise out of 
someone who wasn't even there, you could feel the pain in, in Red Mask's body because you can't really see his face, and you can see the the shock that he was able that that now this person had to live with the death of thirteen, you know, individuals that he was trying to turn into demon slayers. Yeah, trying his best to keep them alive. Yeah, and they weren't making it. That's got to be rough. But I mean, one made it, man. What a good fucking day, and uh, so. After a few days of resting up, uh, the swordsmith, Haguna Zuka. Yeah, dressed like a clown, which was awesome. Dude's got a similar mask to Uru Kodaki, except instead of it having a big nose, it's got a big silly mouth. Mm-hmm. And he's got that dope-ass fucking... Oh, I see. Yeah, that's dope. Um, but uh, he's got that dope-ass straw hat with the fucking wind with chimes With the wind on. chimes on it. Yeah, that was so dope, yeah. And... uh uh, is, is he always dressed up like a clown? Cause like yeah, no, yeah. If you never see him not like that. Okay, cause he was kind of shocked. He's like a clown. What's going on here? And he's like, yeah, no, that's 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 the swordsmith. Yeah, and so that's uh, how that's how he do every time all the time. He uh he he has the sword ready for him, and he wants to see him touch the sword, or essentially kind of um, Harry Potter the sword and become one with it because whatever is uh it can change colors yeah and the idea is that because tanjiro has a reddish hue to his uh hair. eyes and hair, hair yeah eyes he's hair. what's called a child of light and they are the most likely for swords to turn red like these swords are color color changing yeah depending on the wielder and uh depending on what properties the wielder possesses will dictate what sword the color tur- what color the sword turns right yeah and uh you know anywhere between your like general disposition in battle to uh your aptitudes with your different types of water or your different types of breathing like there's a bunch of different variables that like mm-hmm. from what i understand can have an impact on what what color the sword changes yeah and so basically they're believing that tanjiro has a high probability of it Making turning a red, red sword. and instead of that it turns jet black yeah and which is still apparently special. It's still well, ha- well, it's, it's interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, Haganazuka's pissed. <laughs> he puts and, him in like a full Nelson. And so I'll tell you, uh, the, 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 the idea behind the black swords is that they're typically wielded by swords uh, swordsmen who uh, haven't found their true breathing form yet or mm. that don't have an actual breathing form they'll ever be able to master. Mm. That's the idea. It's either you're like doing the wrong breathing technique right now, or you're fucking never going to have a right breathing technique. Yeah. It's like more or less the general vibe. I might be like not a hundred percent correct on that. So it could change if he actually improves his breathing technique or is it just kind of like set to black? Uh, I believe once they change the color, they're set that way for life, but redcon here, redcon there. Well, it's like they're, they're fighting demons. Like yeah. fucking swords get broken. Yeah. yeah. Like I think that I've seen Tanjiro have like three, four swords now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, they've all been black, though. I haven't seen a change yet, which is unfortunate. But, um, uh, but yeah, so he puts him in, like, a rear naked choke and is, like, super pissed off. Cause he's, I'm like, 37. Yeah. Yeah. Which is funny that that's, like, he's he's literally remarking on his age and how he's only, he has yet to see the sword that he wants to see. And he makes these swords for a living. Yeah. It's, it's unfortunate. Yeah. But at this point, uh, a crow flies in the window, uh, which I forgot to mention oh, that like yeah, yeah. when they were getting when they were picking out their metal ore, they also all received crows that will give them their special like their special orders. One didn't um, get a crow. One got a was it like a mockingbird or Zanetsu something. Zanetsu got a sparrow. Yeah, I got a sparrow. Yeah, yeah. Zanetsu got a sparrow because he's a dork. Um, but so Tanjiro's crow comes in and basically tells Tanjiro that he needs to head to a town. Um, where it, girls are going missing. Yeah, girls are going missing, and is and it's the work of a demon. Yeah, and that's it, right? That's the end of episode five. And so at he's this definitely point, shocked when he sees the crow can talk, which is beautiful. He's like, "Hey, you can talk." Oh yeah, shit! I love how it's because like you, you're shocked too. It's like, oh fuck! Yeah. Uh, he has like a, a human response to it. Yeah. But so at this point, you know every everything that you need to know about the anime, you know. Yeah. Right. You know what the fights look like you know how they build backstories you know what the art looks like 
you know, you know what the what the primary impetus for the entire show is, right? Tondra. They're conversating with themselves is definitely interesting. The yeah, the way that they the way that they do the describing things. Yeah. But again, man, these shows they get so complex. There's so much going on, right? That like if they didn't do that, yeah. Because like it gets confusing even with the description. Oh yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And so if they were just doing this shit and they weren't, there wasn't any way of them actually through exposition or whatever right like some so there has to be some type of mechanism for the dissemination of information to you as a viewer yes to understand what you're witnessing right and it's just like the most modern technique right now is through the dialogue with the main character typically yeah. um and through these and through flashbacks and stuff and and they they do a pretty good job with it it's definitely um it's definitely not something that you're that people are used to whenever it comes to American cartoons. But again, most American cartoons don't have um, as robust of techniques and things that are being described, right? Like, there's a lot to the water breathing techniques. Yeah. I mean, there's all these different types of forms. There's all these different types of all all different types of shit, right? And yeah. so, like, they just they take their time and put out a lot of information, but it provides for I mean, bro, you're going to see how it all gets elaborate. Like, if you watch more, you'll see it all gets elaborated upon. So, like, it can all get very kind of verbose at times, but it's for the sake of building a dense world where they can build out a lot of really neat stuff. Like, there's some, I'm telling you, bro, there's some neat shit that happens, bro. And it's because they take the time to establish how these kind of core mechanisms work. And the only way that they can really do that is by having someone literally tell you through the screen, you know? Well, yeah. And this has nothing to do with that. I was a beautiful little rundown of how this is going to work. And uh, I definitely want to ask you, do you remember the MTV cartoons? Uh, vaguely. Vaguely. I'd like to get into that. Aeon Flux. Beavis, not so much Beavis and Butthead, but like Max, Aeon Flux, stuff like that. Stuff that like I was a little too young. Bro, literally anything you want. Yeah. Like at this point, we, we both agreed that like. Yeah. I was a little too, like I'm 36. Six or thirty-five. I don't remember, but anyways, um, so th at that particular time and place, those were kind of like off-limit cartoons. And yeah. Just, you I mean, because we didn't grow up in the in the era of like being able to pirate or watch anything at any given time, they just kind of get pushed to the background. You don't really go back to them, and unless you're gonna go and get like a DVD box set, you know, or something like that. Yeah. So like, it would be nice to like actually go and seek and find like old school Aeon Flux and old school like max and stuff like that which would be neat yeah that sounds real fun i mean at this point you nutted up and watched a thing that you weren't necessarily familiar with yeah. i'm down to nut up and watch stuff that yeah I'm i mean we'll def we're definitely not gonna be cruel to each other i think it's okay. i think it's really neat though to have one of us who's like a dork about something and yeah. one of us who's like watching it for the first time and uh, like i said we're definitely not gonna be cruel about it we're just yeah. gonna we're, we're, we want each individual to be entertained i don't want to yeah. i'm not gonna go out well now we need to go and watch like no offense to you bronies but i'm not gonna make you go out and watch like uh, uh you know my little pony or something like that yeah yeah i mean i would hope that whatever you're making me watch is something yeah. that you particularly enjoy yourself yeah, and all offense to you bronies by the way right I like the the idea is things. that at least one of us is going to be able to fangirl about yeah, whatever yeah, yeah, exactly. we're talking about yeah. even if you've been like i don't really like it i don't like the art style I really don't like the way they're talking too much. Yeah, I, I mean, think it's all, I think it's all I, weird. I don't want to be yeah. a, you know, I love Demon Slayer, but the, the last thing I want to do is be a dick about it too. Be like, oh my god, this sucked and this and that or whatever. I think that you're, we're both kind enough to each other to know that we want these things to be enjoyable. We're not, we're not sitting here trying to torture each other with, yeah, but with I mean, bland but, and un, uninteresting stuff. And believe me, there's enough, there's enough, there's enough content out there that's something that we come along one of us will probably not like it's gonna happen that'll make for an interesting podcast yeah. the day it happens yep well man okay we're we're back though like we really appreciate the four of you that that stuck on and and powered through your incel um behavior don't don't go down the rabbit hole of sticking up for a man who doesn't give two shits about you. Don't if give he, in to your fucking incel dumb like yeah. like that dork did. He well the, here's the thing man that man doesn't give two shits about you. If you don't want if you, if you want to keep watching, you know Rick and Morty that's great. Believe me, there's 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 other individuals that work entirely too hard on that to throw that completely away. You're just not going to catch it here as much. Um, don't let anybody tell you how to live your life. But Do here's what's the right thing. for you. Yeah, but here's the thing: don't go, don't go chasing after this man who doesn't care about you, 
and essentially uh you know was you know he doesn't you know he, he's he's not your friend he's not he's not here for you he, he made he made him and someone else made quality content with a lot of other people involved if you want to go fuck with somebody over what this guy has going on go build a fence <laughs> yeah right yeah. like go go do something good for your community if yeah. you have that much goddamn time and energy on your hands go do something positive for your community don't go be a douche yeah uh like i said the, the at the end of the day we have to remember this is our fandom but they're not our friends we they don't we don't know them they don't know us uh, we enjoy their content and we relay their content in, in a fun, accessible YouTube videos that we hope you enjoy. Uh, and, I, and I'm looking forward to this new concept of portaling into fun and interesting cartoons. Yeah, I, same, man. I hope that everybody who's tuned in, the whole, you know, half dozen of y'all, like the, uh, like the new format, the new idea. Uh, it's definitely a little bit of a change of pace, but, um, you know, we're doing our best to make fun, interesting content and hopefully... Uh, you know, you guys will go give Demon Slayer a shot. I think it, personally, it's a worthwhile endeavor. And uh, you know, hell, let us know how you feel about it in the comments. You know, what I'm saying, gang, gang, <laughs> gang, gang. Here's something: even God makes assholes. So uh, he w- he was a creator who created a wonderful thing. So. <laughs> well, on that note, even God makes assholes. Then Portal Boys be podcasting. It's good to be back. Thanks everybody for sticking with us. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Later, Peace. later. Monkey mouth. Monkey mouth. Monkey mouth. Monkey mouth. Monkey mouth. Monkey mouth.